All right, everybody, so we're doing a very small portion of the carpet. So um, this is actually a pre-existing issue. So there was some decent amount of pet stains that were in this carpet prior uh, to us being here. And um, this was actually cleaned, oh, two months ago. And as you know, you can tell, this couch used to be pushed back up against here. So the traffic areas where these spots are showing, they're showing back up and it took a little over a month um, from what she said. And the reason why they are is because the pet urine has gotten beneath the carpet and in the padding. So walking areas, when there's issues like that, are gonna resurface to the top sooner um, because soil is getting attracted to it. So when I put the UV light over it, it did not illuminate. So um, it's not doing what it normally does when the stains are still in the carpet. So when you have that type of situation, the only thing you could do outside of cleaning it again and hoping you get everything that time is by replacing the padding. So we are gonna be cleaning this again. And I mentioned if it does happen again in a month or so, two months, that means for sure it's still in the pad and the suggestion is to replace the padding uh, because it's just going to be a reoccurring issue until that has been resolved. So we're basically going to give her the works on this. We're going to treat it heavily for pet urine, um, you know, obviously for soil to mechanically scrub it, rinse it, extract it to neutralize it, and then we're going to be applying uh, Scotch Guard to it because it's not that much work. It's literally this open space here that's affected. Nowhere else in any of the rooms did any of the stains come back. Um, we did over in that front living area and none of them showed back up because there's no traffic really in there. Most of the traffic is in here in the main living room. So these are the ones that showed back up naturally because they got the most walked on. So when you have that situation showing up, um, sometimes it can be the uh, the carpet cleaner if they didn't uh, spray it very well um, and extract very well. But in those cases, it should show up within the first 48 hours or less if that's the case, if it's still in the carpet. But if it's past the carpeting, usually it's gonna take a month or so for it to really show up because it's just a little bit left in the carpet and uh, dirt is getting attracted to now where that moisture's made its way up to. All right, so as you can see, all the stains are pretty much gone just from the pre-spray. Haven't actually started running the good old CRB yet, but. Oop, looks like my power source doesn't work. All right, so you can see that those stains that were really showing are no longer there. The pre-spray is doing its job. So now we're gonna mechanically scrub all these areas of concern. Remember, we're just doing in front of where the couch was sitting and of course on top of where the couch was. These are the only areas that the stains showed back up right in the traffic spots like I explained earlier. So these were heavily treated before the CRB uh, with Unchained to take care of the, uh, the staining that has surfaced up to the carpet from the padding. So dwell time is important too, so by the time I get to extracting this out, it's had a good 20 minutes of prep. With Unchained, usually 20 minutes to 30 minutes, depending on what you're up against, is good. If it's cat urine, sometimes I'll let it dwell even longer, and I will be using a stronger solution of, of Unchained. So she said not really over here, but you know, I'm just hitting this area just to do, do it.
whenever we have a very small job like this and you know we all companies have a minimum service charge we want to try and maximize their their money out of it so because um, it's not a lot of cleaning that's being done that's why I did a heavy treatment of Unchained as part of it but also I will be applying Scotchgard to this job afterwards because with how little we're doing here it actually still fits within the charge so we just do it as part of the service because it's the right thing to do and because it makes sense for them too it's only going to benefit them and honestly as much as the minimum service charges for the little bit of job this is it it works out you know and then we know next time we come to clean it what area has been protected so therefore it should be a little easier to clean so it's a benefit to us too so it's about doing what's right for the client As you can see, all the stains have came out. Working our way back through this little hallway entry space, but otherwise, lots of dry passes, especially in this area. This is where the bulk of them were. Sure, satisfying to clean. 
cleaning turned out well. Okay, so right now, Scotch Guard's being applied. Like I said, we're trying to maximize their money, so we're um, going and doing the whole nine yards on this. Good pet treatment um, to help with those spots because I think that's exactly what they are. Is they are, could be potentially a new one too. So here's another thing to con consider if you're a, a, a business owner. Get yourself a moisture meter because there's a chance that it could be a reoccurring uh, offender, you know, peeing in the same spot again. And a moisture meter will give you a reading if there's any new moisture there. Because if a month plus has passed, there should be no reason why you're getting a moisture meter reading on an old stain. Um, it's not that common that that happens. So if it's a repeat offender, your moisture meter is gonna tell you and then you can explain that to the client. Like you may have not have seen it happen, but unfortunately your pet had peed on the carpet again. So um, now that we're done with the Scotch Guard application, he's going back in there to rake the carpet out. That's gonna help set the pile, but also helps get the um, Scotch Guard into the carpet a little better too. So gets rid of his footprints from walking through, um, sets the pile and the, the uh, protector into it too. So. With that being said, this job is basically done and we'll be on to our next. Um, but hopefully this information helps somebody. So that way if you come across this scenario, you have a better understanding of what you can do, how you can explain it. Um, because if it's a month, two months later and the stain comes up, it's not the carpet and it's probably, you know, by about 100% not your fault. Um, because it should not take that long if it's still in the carpet to show up. Uh, usually it's 48 hours from what I've learned in my time. If it's going to show up and it's still in the carpet, it's usually within the first 48 hours. So if it doesn't, then it's in the pad and the padding needs to be addressed or it needs to be recleaned until they can get the pad in that affected area taken care of. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Hi everybody, Nolan with Black Diamond Services. So this is a spot that I've already started to pre-treat and I will show you um, a before picture I took. They had it <laughs> taped off. So you'll see that here in a little bit. But thing is, is they already put some soap and water on it. And you can see I haven't scrubbed it or nothing. The fiber's already distorted and there's some potential color loss. So this is kind of a specialty carpet. Um, I've cleaned it once before for her last year. And everything came out fine um, it's just it is kind of finicky and you can see just the soap and water that she used had already created some fiber distortion so there is or oranges hue around the carpet so I'll let you see that really quick <laughs> 